What if I told you that everything you think you know about the Sims 2 neighborhood corruption is wrong? I feel like neighborhood corruption has always been a massive topic of discussion in the Sims 2 community. Everyone knows it's coming to get you, everyone's afraid of it, some people to the point that it even prevents them from playing the game. So what's all the fuss about? If you're a Sims 2 player, you're probably familiar with that famous Sims wiki guide titled Avoiding Neighborhood Corruption. And you probably remember that this guide used to be very dramatic, so to speak. I've read that guide many, many times, and for years I used to be one of these people who pirated all of the claims from this guide, even though I never really understood how it all works, and actually I never really had a neighborhood blow up, despite doing all of the supposed very bad things back in the day. And then I got into programming, and I've been working as a software developer for four years now. My professional experience has made me question some of the claims in this guide. Don't get me wrong, the game corruption as opposed to neighborhood corruption always kinda made sense to me. I mean, it's logical that if you corrupt your game's core files, you might see some serious glitches here and there, and you're probably gonna have to reinstall your game. Fair enough. With hood corruption, on the other hand, things were a little bit more tricky because the list of things that you're apparently not supposed to do used to be way longer. And for me, as a software developer, some of the things sounded a little bit strange or even borderline superstitious. How the hell something as simple as deleting a gravestone is supposed to destroy your entire neighborhood immediately? Did the developers really mess up that badly? The official explanations as to why corruption happens were a little bit confusing and did not really satisfy my curiosity. I wanted to know all of the technical details, I wanted to know what exactly happens to your save files, I wanted to get to the bottom of this. So around April 2021 I decided, what the hell, I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of these illegal things in my game and see what happens. And what I found drastically contradicted some of the claims of the Sims wiki guide. So I started a thread on the Mod The Sims forum to verify some of the things that I found. And then I ended up on more awesome than you. And boy did I go down the rabbit hole. I decided to make a video about this subject to summarize it all and hopefully lead to the change of the Sims wiki guide. But it took me so bloody long to make this video that the guide has already been updated. <laughs> and I found that quite a few of my own posts have been used as sources in this guide, so whoever edited this, many many thanks for the recognition, although I think this whole thing was very much a group effort. However, ever since the guide has been updated, I've seen a lot of people question the new changes. From their perspective, for the longest time the consensus used to be one thing and then it suddenly completely changed and the whole thing was flipped upside down. So they were confused, understandably so. This is why I decided to finish this video anyway, to help you understand the technical reason behind why this guide was updated. I feel like, despite the corruption guide undergoing a massive overhaul, lots of people still see corruption as this sort of mythical phenomenon. No one knows what it really is or how it occurs, but people are convinced that if you don't follow these rituals, if you make this one mistake, then your neighborhood will become infected, and this infection will creep up on you slowly, slowly in the background and will spread around the whole neighborhood until it blows up in your face. I disagree with this notion, and I think as you continue watching this video, you will understand why. There is no magic in programming. If a bug occurs, there is always a logical reason for it, even if you don't quite understand it. And I don't think that corruption is a slow process. I don't think it spreads like a virus. I think in the vast majority of cases, corruption happens quickly and suddenly, Although you might not always notice straight away, especially if the affected sims are NPCs or townies. I know, this is a bold statement, but there's gonna be a lot of bold statements in this video, so buckle up. 
The goal of this video is not only to support some of the new claims made in the Sims Wiki guide, but also to help you to understand what corruption really is so that you can just enjoy the game and stop stressing about every single bug you see thinking it might be a sign of impending doom. You know that list of symptoms on the Sims Wiki? I know that it says that it's an incomplete list, but in my opinion, this is as close to a complete list as it can possibly be. Anything outside of it, probably just a bug, not corruption. And even if, even if you happen to have an actual symptom of corruption in your game, that does not necessarily mean that your entire neighborhood is doomed. This just means that something somewhere went wrong in the saving process and as long as your neighborhood still opens up in the game and it's in PE, chances are you can still fix it. I know that people used to say that neighborhood corruption is 100% permanent and unfixable but just, just think about it. We have clean templates of the pre-made neighborhoods and the three base game neighborhoods Oh boy, they are broken way beyond what a normal player can do in their game, even with cheats. Seriously, I recommend you watch some of the Tannic Sims 2 or Calipers and Tongs videos. Not only we have the evidence of the Sims being deleted completely along with their character file, but also we have Sims with mouths on their foreheads, we have Nat Futa. I mean, if that can be fixed, your neighborhood probably can be as well. And as a side note, you know that you don't have to delete a corrupted neighborhood, right? Before the big update, the Sims Wiki used to say in the how to fix corruption section that the only way that will completely remove hood corruption is to delete the entire neighborhood. I don't call that fixing, I call that giving up. But jokes aside, I think that many people misunderstood this because I've seen so many people online who were convinced that they have to delete the neighborhood as soon as they see a first sign of corruption. Guys, even if your neighborhood is actually corrupted, there's nothing stopping you from continuing to play it. Nothing bad is going to happen, your computer is not going to explode, no one's gonna call the police, okay? Yes, you might see some glitches here and there, and there is a chance that at some point your neighborhood would stop loading, but hey, this is what the backups are for, right? And now, follow me down the corruption rabbit hole. This part of the video is going to be absolutely essential for you to understand the rest of my rambling. It's the very basics of how The Sims 2 works in terms of saving your progress. So I strongly encourage you not to skip it and to pay close attention. Okay, so what are these references everyone is talking about? Let's start with Hood Checker. If you ever used this application, you've probably noticed those weird numbers all over the place. This is something we call neighbor ID, NID in short. Every single sim in the neighborhood has their unique number that is assigned to that sim and that sim only. These numbers look a bit scary because Hood Checker displays them in a hexadecimal format for some reason. You don't have to know what this means, all you need to know is that in the background these are just regular as numbers. You can open the online hexadecimal to decimal converter, type in that number, and then you're going to see a much friendlier version of it. For example, Michael Bachelor has 0x00cc next to his name. We put that in the converter and we can see that Michael's NID is 204. Let's remember that for later. Every single sim in the neighborhood has their own file in the characters folder. Also, every single sim has a sim description entry. Sim description is basically a list of sims stored in the neighborhood's core package file. This is how the neighborhood knows about the sims that exist in it. Sim description stores all of the sim stats, like skills, personality or interests, age info, job info, aspiration, these kind of things. However, what it doesn't store is the sim's name, 
thumbnail, appearance, and 3D data that is stored inside of the character file. When a new sim is created or born, two things happen. First of all, a new file appears in the characters folder. Second, the neighborhood.package gets a new sim description entry with a unique NID. That entry has a reference to the newly created character file. So now the game knows that, let's say, the sim with the NID 200 has their core data stored in n005user123.package. These two need to agree with one another in order for a sim to be recognized as valid. If we delete a character file and run hood checker before we launch the game, the hood checker is going to flag for us that this sim description has no character file associated with it. If we then run The Sims 2, the game is going to be like, uh oh, there is a character file missing, so it will remove the sim description as that reference is now pointing to nothing. That sim is now gone. If you delete the sim description but leave the character file intact, the game will generate a new sim description entry for that file. Which, by the way, will be a completely broken sim description entry, but I'll talk about this later in the video. So we can say that sim description talking to a character file is one type of a reference, right? What about all the other stuff? The Sims 2 has loads of different references, but the ones that are going to be the most relevant for us are Family Ties, Sim Relations, Sim Wants and Fears, and Memories. All of this information is stored in the main neighborhood.package. When you play The Sims 2, the game receives various references to Sims' unique IDs all the time, and it looks for the Sim description entry to find out who that Sim is. For example, let's have a look at Family Ties. The game receives the following information. Sim number 90 is a spouse of Sim number 204. If all of the data is in place, the game can be like, who is Sim number 90? Well, the sim description is telling me that it's Dina Caliente. Sim number 204 is Michael Batchelor. So, Dina Caliente is the spouse of Michael Batchelor. This is exactly what the game does in the background when you're asking it to display a family tree. Now, what happens when we delete Michael Batchelor? Now the game is like, Dina Caliente is the spouse of... Um... Yeah, to put it simply, computer programs really don't like it when they're expecting some data but receive nothing in return. However, The Sims 2 handles null references gracefully for the most part. If a family tree connection points to null, that connection is simply removed. In plain English, this means that if you delete a sim, the sim just disappears off the family tree and the game doesn't crash. The Sims 2 also has placeholders that are being displayed if information cannot be loaded. The famous dollar subject is a prime example. But regardless, we can now say that our family tie is now corrupted because one of the Sims no longer exists. The same is true for relationships, memories and yes, wants and fears as well. The last one can be a little bit confusing because one might think why wouldn't you store wants and fears inside of the sim description like all of the other stats? But the wants and fears system in The Sims 2 is insanely complicated. In short, wants and fears that the sim roles are not totally random and their aspiration is not the only thing that influences them. Every sim has their own sets of triggers, often those triggers relate to other sims, like their children. The game also keeps track of many previous wants and fears as well. Yeah, that is another can of worms, let's just say that there is a lot going on in there, so it makes perfect sense to store those separately in my opinion. This kind of reference corruption where the sim's character file is missing but the references remain is what Hootchecker detects really well. So you can rely on this application when the sim's character file goes AWOL. 
there are three more things that I need to address about hood checker reports. First of all, I need to talk about those sim has no character file errors. I mean, it's common knowledge at this point, but I still see people asking about it every now and then, so I'm gonna explain this. You are going to see these errors if you have mods that add new object NPCs into your game, like multi-pollination technician or multi-plant sim mods. If you have those mods, then you can basically ignore those errors. Second, people on forums often ask. Hood Checker is showing lots of relationships to sims that don't exist. Is my game corrupted? No. 99% of the time there's nothing to worry about. The game creates a lot of relationships between the sims and objects that they use, and it's storing them in the same way that the relationships between sims. They just don't display on the relationship panel because that displays valid and living characters only. For example, sims have relationships with the bed that they sleep on, the car they used to drive to work, or their other favorite objects. If you're really curious what this relationship is, you can easily check it, like so. Convert that hexadecimal to decimal, open the game, turn on testing cheats, force error on any random object on the lot, click reset, then exit the game and open the log file that has been generated. In every log, you have the lot object dump, and you can search for that object ID in there. For example, this sim apparently has a relationship with her bed and the drum kit for some reason. Again, this is the game's intended behavior, but Hood Checker is going to flag them because these are not sims. You can safely remove them. In fact, I recommend removing them every now and then because sims retain those relationships after they move and it's just a little bit messy. But it's nothing to worry about. Another issue that you can see in an unmodded game is when Hood Checker displays the subject does not exist errors about certain memories, namely those that mark fulfillment of some lifetime wants. So do not panic if you see those. There is a known bug which makes the game assign some random shit as the subject rather than the sim that should be the subject. Download memory fixes to prevent that bug from happening. It won't fix any existing memory, so you will have to fix that in SimPE, but it's pretty easy. I'll post links in the description to the mod and to the guide. I would say that the only hood checker errors that you really need to worry about are the errors inside Family Ties and Sim Wants and Fears sections. When these appear, this most likely means that you have a sim missing in your neighborhood. The Sim Wants and Fears section is actually the most reliable in regards to detecting AWOL character files, as even townies with no relations have them. But again, when you see those, don't freak out. Make sure you've backed up your neighborhood and just use the Hood Checkers Remove option. Now, whilst we're here, I think it would help a lot of people if I clarified how this application actually works. I've noticed that many simmers treat Hood Checker as a sort of a cure-all for all of the corruption-related problems. As in, a lot of the time somebody mentions something suspicious looking in their game, the default response is always, have you tried scanning your neighborhood with the Hood Checker? And every time I see this, I am so tempted to respond, mate, mate, this is not gonna help you. <laughs> Guys, this is not how this application works. I read through the entire source code of Hood Checker. I can actually understand it pretty well since it's written in C Sharp and that's my main programming language. The main functionality of this app is looping through all of the character files and then matching them up with sim description. And if we have a match, that means we have a valid sim. And then the app goes through all of the references like sim ones and fears, memory, sim relations, family ties, and then it checks whether any of these relate to a valid sim and if not it throws an error that's literally it so hood checker is really only going to detect references to non-existent sims actually non-existent character file and all 
I mean, it does do other stuff as well, but it's mostly minor. For example, it can detect an invalid relationship with self, which is not that big of a deal. It can also fix memories that have an incorrect subject instance, I'll talk about this later in the video. And it's actually pretty effective at restoring graves that have gone missing when you restore the backup. But only if you haven't saved that lot since restoring the backup. And that's pretty much it. That's all Hood Checker does. Let's start with Delete All Characters Cheat. The Sims wiki used to say for the longest time that it's basically the same thing as deleting a sim from the bin, just on a larger scale. And that's not true. That's not what this cheat does. So what does it do exactly? I used this cheat in my game and I recorded it. I can show you what happens. So you type in this cheat and you get a prompt. The game is like, Are you sure about that? If you click yes, the neighborhood reloads and sure enough, it's empty. Because that cheat completely wipes out the characters folder. It actually took me by surprise. I had the characters folder opened on another screen because I wanted to see how the file size will change and they just all disappeared at once. Because this cheat makes the neighborhood reload, it simultaneously gets rid of all of the sim description entries that were assigned to those wiped character files. However, what that cheat doesn't do is it doesn't clear out all of the references. I mean, surprisingly it does delete some of them, family ties and most memories do disappear, but the rest stays there. Most notably the dreaded want trees. They do show up in the hood checker afterwards, so you can just easily remove them. But if you don't, they stay there forever. So I started with the cheat because the same thing happens when you manually remove any character files from that folder, just on a smaller scale. And as we discussed previously, when the character file goes missing, the corresponding sim description entry gets deleted and therefore all of the memories, relationships and other references to that sim are actually pointing to non-existent data. Now some of you may ask, why exactly is that a bad thing? You said in the previous section that The Sims 2 is pretty good at handling null references, so that shouldn't be a problem right? Well, yes and no. First of all, error handling is hardly ever perfect, so if you have a lot of null references lying about in your application, chances are that one of them will eventually slip through the game's safety net and cause the application to crash. Second, there is a much bigger problem that I haven't addressed yet. When a sim goes missing, their old NID now becomes free real estate. So technically, a new sim can generate with it and acquire those orphaned references because the game no longer recognizes this number as taken. That may potentially cause chaos if the deleted sim was a married sim with two children and the one that snapped up their NID is a toddler. So now I explained how the references work, and we know that if we delete the character file, all of the references to that sim are left behind, happily pointing to null, and this may or may not cause problems during the gameplay. So now we know why deleting sims from the bin corrupts the game, right? No. Deleting sims from the bin and deleting gravestones does not cause corruption. It's a myth. A very common myth that has been repeated on various forums and blog posts for many many years, but a myth nonetheless. This was corrected in the Sims Wiki article and I'm really glad it was, but many players are still questioning this change. I remember when the news dropped that this guide has been updated, people were like, Hmm, I don't know about that. Everybody always used to say that this is super dangerous and that you should never ever delete any sims. And now what? It's suddenly okay? So let me explain. 
During my year-long research, not only did I find absolutely zero evidence that deleting sims from the bin does any kind of harm to your game, but I actually found the evidence to the contrary. And so has Lazy Duchess, who I spoke to prior to making this video, just to make sure that I'm not talking out of my ass. And so have other people, many years ago. The in-game delete button has not been badly coded. I actually think the devs have done a pretty good job with that. In my opinion, The Sims 2 handles deletion very gracefully, following the industry standard, and it has multiple safety mechanisms to ensure that all of the references will still work even after you delete a sim. Deleting sims from the bin and deleting gravestones is basically the same thing. This is why I put them both in the same section. As in, the same thing happens to the sims character file, and no, it doesn't get deleted, but I'll get to that. The official explanation as to why deleting sims from the bin is a VBT used to be that the delete button removes the sim only partially, that it somehow shreds the sim's character file and that shredded data floats around your neighborhood waiting to attach itself to other sims. Which always confused the hell out of me because that is not how computer data works. <laughs> data doesn't just float around looking for somewhere to stick, okay? The only way a sim could possibly inherit references of another sim is when they generate with the same NID. Period. Now, allow me to explain why I think the way the devs coded the in-game delete button is actually the best possible way they could have handled this. So, in programming, whenever you have such a complex data structure with lots of interconnected entities, in this case the entities being sims, you have three different ways you can go about deleting one of them. You can delete the sim completely, but leave all of the references intact. This is a bad idea, obviously, I already explained why. This would be the equivalent of going to your neighborhood's characters folder, taking one of the character files and putting it in the bin. If the in-game delete button did that, then all of the memories about that deleted sim would say dollar subject, their thumbnail would be gone from the family tree, and at the same time, their NID would no longer be considered as taken, so theoretically, and I mean very theoretically, remember that for later, some other sim could generate with that NID and inherit all of the remaining references as a result. However, this is not what happens after you delete the sim from the bin, so let's move on. The second option is to remove the sim completely, including all of the references. That seems to be what some people claim the game should do. Now let me tell you why this would be a terrible idea. When your game's data structure is as complex as The Sims 2, generally you do not want to allow the users to completely delete the parent entity as well as all of the child entities with a click of a button. There are multiple reasons for this. First of all, that kind of deletion could result in some unexpected data loss. As a programmer, you really don't know what your users are going to be deleting. Imagine you have a family consisting of a grandparent, a parent and a child. You move the parent out and delete them, including the references, right? And now what? The grandparent and the kid are no longer connected in the family tree. But that's just one example. Removing the references would also mean removing all memories that relate to that sim, and this might not necessarily be what the players want. Memories are not there just to be fancy, many of them actually serve a purpose in the gameplay. For example, the memory about the first kiss determines whether the first kiss interaction should be available or not. If your sim has a memory of a kid being taken away, they can no longer adopt children. All of the woohoo and first date memories are being counted to determine whether the lifetime want has been completed. This is why removing the memories from remaining sims could lead to some strange scenarios, like a sim being able to do their first kiss after they already had multiple children. Second of all, you have no idea how slow it would be. 
and the time it would take to delete a family would increase exponentially with the number of sims you have in your neighborhood, both dead and alive. Just consider the fact that you are always deleting a household from the family bin, not just a single sim. Okay, so let's say I'm writing some code to cascade delete a family. Let's deal with memories first. What I need to do is, for every single sim in the household, I have to take that sim's NID and then go through every single memory in the neighborhood of every single sim, including dead sims, including all of the useless townies, service NPCs and the like, and then I have to check whether any of them relates to the sim being deleted, and if so, delete that memory. So that's two nested for loops already, and that just the memories. You have to do the same thing with family ties, since they only work one way, and relationships. Oh, and also, don't forget about wants and fears. For every single sim in the neighborhood, you will have to go through all of the wants and fears triggers as well, just to make sure that they don't try and roll once about the missing sim. So, obviously, it's a bad thing because performance matters in video games. But not only that, a lengthy deletion process would actually be quite risky. What happens if the game crashes mid-deletion? Then you actually are corrupting your save files. So, I hope I convinced you that this is not what the game should be doing. So, we have two options, both of them equally bad. There is a third option though. In programming, there is something called soft delete or logical delete. That means if you have an entity with lots of other entities referencing it, instead of deleting it entirely, you can just permanently hide it from the user. And guess what? This is exactly what The Sims 2 is doing. You delete a sim in the bin or gravestone and two things happen. First of all, sim becomes unlinked, which is nothing bad, it just means that in some ways the sim is hidden from the game. Second of all, the character file does shrink significantly and the sim shows up as having no character data in sim BE. The naming might be a little bit unfortunate in this case because one might assume that this means that the character file is gone, but no, it's still there. And it's not one kilobyte, but more like 30-ish. So what exactly happens to the character file and what gets deleted? Okay, so The Sims 2 character files are so-called package files. At first glance, it might look like just one file, but as the name package suggests, under the hood it's actually many different files packaged inside one. Think of it like a zip archive. So you can open a character file in SimPE and see a list of files on the left. You have 3D data and everything related to appearance, behavior functions, thumbnails, yada yada yada. So upon pressing that dreaded bin icon, what happens is the game removes most of these child files because they are no longer needed. What remains is the bare minimum, meaning all of the necessary information needed for the references to be valid is still there. The thumbnail is there, the name is there, the sim technically exists, and most importantly, their NID is still taken because their sim description is still there. It means that newly created sims will never get that NID assigned to them, and they will never acquire that sim's data, no matter how long you play or how many sims you delete that way. I found an old post from More Awesome The New Forum which claims that the reason why deleting sims from the bin is risky is because the game is still trying to access the data of the unlinked sims other than the thumbnail and the name, like it's looking for files that have been deleted from the character package or something. I seriously doubt that this is the case. Prior to making this video, I contacted Lazy Duchess to see what he thinks about this whole thing. He agreed with me that deleting sims from the bin is safe. He also said, 
I've also made the same point as you do. People consider the soft delete bad, that leaving shredded character files is awful, but in reality, as you say, it makes sense and it's actually a good way to ensure that the game still works without the sim. I've made a test mod to unlinked sims and then try to access their data and things like that, all in game, zero issues. I even deleted sims when playing normally and I've run a test hood for this kind of stuff. So I'm fairly confident. I don't think anyone in the Sims 2 community would doubt Lazy Duchess's credentials to make this kind of statement. But I have performed my own series of experiments as well, just to see what happens. I have created two married couples. In both of them, the spouses knew only each other and had memories about each other and themselves only. The game is often using memories to display the thought bubbles above Sim's heads. The easiest way you can see this is daydreaming and chatting on the computer. The Sims also talk about recent memories, gossip about other Sims' negative memories, and congratulate others about their positive memories. So, back to our married couples. In both of them, I have deleted the husband. One in the family bin, and for the other one, I got rid of the character file. In both cases, the wives never try to think about the memories related to their missing husbands. They weren't spreading any gossip about the missing sims, no matter how hard I tried. They weren't rolling once about their husbands, no matter how many times I re-rolled their once. During daydreaming, the game generated images of some random objects instead of those leftover memories and I could not replicate the squiggly lines in a thought bubble bug for the love of me. In fact, I have never ever seen it in my game. Ever. And I've been playing The Sims 2 since its release. I am not saying that the squiggly line in the thought bubble phenomenon doesn't exist. There are screenshots that prove this. I'm just saying that it's probably not a sign of impending doom. These lines could literally just be a placeholder for when the game cannot load an icon. It could be some dodgy custom content or a simple bug in the game, not necessarily a corrupted memory. Alright, now listen. Even if you deleted some sims from the bin and you wholeheartedly believe that this will corrupt your game, fear not, you can still fix it. There is another guide, also on the Sims Wiki, which inadvertently tells you how to do it. Bringing Sims back to life in the section titled Resurrecting Sims with no character data. If you accidentally deleted a Sim and want to restore them, you can just create a lookalike and then follow this guide. Yes, those mysterious Sims with no character data are just Sims that have been deleted from the game. Either the grave was deleted, as it's the case with most of the pre-made ancestors, or they just got straight up deleted from the bin. Same thing with those hidden duplicate sims, i.e. Darlene Dreamer, Skip Broke and Nervous Subject. Do you know what happened to them? They died, yes, nervous as well, and then the gravestone was deleted in-game, which removed parts of their character file. Mystery solved. So, if you can resurrect those sims, you can 100% do the same for all of the sims you've deleted. Want me to prove it? Let's 
The only thing that you're not going to get back is that sim's 3D data and original appearance, because as we've seen, that gets deleted during the character file shredding. But you can create a lookalike that will essentially be that sim in spirit. They will retain all information saved inside of the sim description, as well as all of the references like memories and family ties. If you want that sim gone, there is a way too, much more risky, but you can also straight up delete that character file, open that neighborhood so that sim description gets deleted, close the game, run the hood checker, let it do its thing, and then remove all of the memories in SimPE, and then manually check all the references just in case, and there you go, the sim is no more. Both options include a lot of fiddling and SimPE, so just know what you're doing, follow the guide, and always, always make sure to back up your neighborhood beforehand. Um, not really. <laughs> I mean, yes, the claim that deleting sims from the bin is a bad thing used to be very widespread in the community, but that doesn't mean everybody always agreed. Of course, when I discovered through my experiment how deleting sims actually works, I was still full of doubts at this point. I was like, this has been common knowledge in the Sims 2 community for so long, like there's no way, I must be missing something. So I started a thread on Mod The Sims, detailing my findings and saying that I cannot see how it can possibly cause corruption, but perhaps I'm wrong. And then I actually found out that certain modders have been saying for years that deleting sims from the bin is fine. Most notably Chris Hatch and Lazy Duchess, but there have been others. The earliest post I found saying that this was intended behaviour was from 2006 by Theo. Sorry to swim against the current here, but deleting a family from the sim bin does not cause any harm to the game. It will empty the character files, which become just picture placeholders, but the sim will remain intact in the neighborhood database. Of course, it is an irreversible change, but if you are concerned about the corrupt memories or broken family ties, I can assure you that this method is relatively harmless. Most potentially neighborhood nuking problems happen when you delete the sim description entry in SimPE, for example, but the game's delete option will not do this. Here's another one from 2008. This is a response to someone claiming that sims deleted from the bin are not deleted properly. That's correct behavior though. It leaves behind enough of a character stamp file so that when other sims have memory of the deleted sim, they can still find out its name and what it looked like, and also it reserves the neighbor ID which could otherwise get reused. You wouldn't want Cassandra Goth to have a memory of her deleted brother, and next time you looked it had turned into a memory of the latest newly spawned townie. You'd have more bad things if it didn't behave that way. Even in that Sims wiki guide, in the talk section where no one ever looks, there is a thread from 2018 where someone is describing exactly what I found during my tests as well. So there have been people saying that this is not going to break your game, it's a myth, as early as 2006. So what happened then? How did this become such a widespread myth? I am almost 100% certain that this myth comes from More Awesome Than You forum. And I think I have a vague timeline on how and when it came to be. Let's start from the very beginning, which is The Sims 2 release. The Sims 2 was released on 14th of September 2004. The first version of SimPE was released less than a month later, in October 2004. I mean, talk about fast programming. What I'm trying to say is that whilst we had the tools to look inside of the package files pretty much immediately after the release, the game was still very new when this whole talk of corruption started and there was still a lot of unknowns. April 2005, Piscato releases No Unlink on Delete. This mod is often mentioned as one of the mods essential for corruption prevention. 
But did you know that at the time of its release, this mod was not intended to fix anything corruption related? The only purpose of this mod was to stop the game from partially destroying the sim file on deletion of the tombstone. Because, as you know, in vanilla game, deleting a tombstone is exactly the same as deleting a sim from the bin. The timeline is very important here. A month before No Unlink on Delete was released, on 1st of March 2005, EA released the University Expansion Pack. And as we all know, this introduced their Resurrectonometron, also known as the Grim Reaper phone. Before that, in the base game, there was no way of resurrecting Sims, and it seems like it was not a planned feature either. So, when creating the game, Maxis decided to empty out the Sims character file upon deletion of a tombstone. Pescado called this process character file shredding, and it's hard to blame Maxis for this design decision. At the time, the tombstone used to be the only remaining representation of a dead Sim. So it was pretty safe to assume that if a player deletes it, they probably want that Sim gone. So there was no point in keeping that Sim's data. However, this became a problem with University. Players often wanted to resurrect the dead sims, but if they accidentally deleted a tombstone, or if a tombstone disappeared on its own due to a common bug, they couldn't. This mod was created simply to mitigate this issue. That's literally it. Corruption is never even mentioned in this thread. Cherry on top? Pescado himself basically says that it's okay to delete gravestones in vanilla game, as long as you don't care about those sims since the process is irreversible. Someone asked, I don't quite get it, does this mean we can resurrect our dead even if we've deleted their tombstones? And Pescado replied, this means that it would be potentially possible to resurrect the dead even after the tombstone destruction, yes, since the tombstone no longer vaporizes the sim's character file forever when deleted. This functionality was being inadvertently called whenever the tombstone got removed for any reason, including sometimes removal to a community lot, that basically meant the tombstone arrived in a shredded form and disintegrated, losing your sim forever, barring a complicated recovery procedure involving file splicing from backups. Of course, this means that the random junk sims you might kill won't be shredded either and thus their files will be slightly more bloated, but you can always take this out before shredding those. Just avoid moving too many tombstones to another lot when this isn't in place. So, the phenomenon of character file shredding, that is, reducing the sims file to a stub, was already known back then, but it wasn't seen as an issue. There is also a concept of the big fiery ball visible from space, which is just a fancy term for save file corruption. That phrase was used on the more awesome than you forums basically since the game's release. The earliest post that I found was from July 2005, but I'm pretty sure this wasn't the first one. So people already knew very early on that the save file corruption happens and they were trying to find the cause. At the time, the big fiery ball visible from space was mainly attributed to neighborhood overpopulation. Now, a side note, a lot of anecdotal evidence suggests that overpopulation can cause problems in your neighborhood. I will talk more about this a little bit later, but bottom line is the character file count that matters. And that includes not only the sims you've created, but also the sims you've deleted, and all of the dead sims, all of the townies, NPCs, and so on. The unmodded game generates so many useless sims, it's insane. I mean, just the fact that there are three of every NPCs. And with the university expansion and with the addition of saphoods, the problem became even more prevalent because, yes, all of the saphood sims also count. Even more so considering that there used to be an artificial character file limit of 1000. But wait, was that? We'll talk about this later, don't worry. Now the limit is technically the limit of 16 bit integer, which is 32,767. 
But that doesn't mean your game is gonna handle this many sims at once, especially if you play on a Mac. There is speculation that stuff like disappearing sims might be caused by this. As a result, people are trying to get rid of unwanted sims by deleting them from the sim bin, hoping that it would save them from overpopulation. Then the modder started saying that, no, sorry, it's not gonna help you, because the stab character file stays behind and that still counts towards the population limit. So then people just started straight up deleting character files, which is a bad idea, as we discussed. The delete all characters cheat was also very commonly used to remedy the overpopulation problem and in fact the usage of this cheat was often recommended in 2005 to 2006. Sometime in early 2006 people started noticing the bug of lifetime ones not matching the aspiration or toddlers and children getting lifetime ones. It has been connected to the usage of delete all characters cheat and modders have discovered that it happens because of the abandoned one trees that are later absorbed by other sims who generate with that NID. This phenomenon is called dangling ones and fears in Pescades. The usage of delete all characters cheat was still being recommended, but people have been advised to clean up those dangling ones in SimPE as hood checker didn't exist back then. And as you can imagine, inexperienced players caused all kinds of chaos in their games trying to do that, but that's another story. So, the users of More Awesome Than You started saying that deleting sims improperly might lead to other sims generating with their old NID, resulting in mismatched lifetime ones, ones about flirting with a dog or asking a toddler out on a date and so on. Which is correct. Also, I think it's important to mention that Pescado wasn't a big fan of deleting sims in the bin mainly because they left a character file behind and thus they still contributed to overpopulation. It had nothing to do with broken references back then. He wanted to give people the option to delete a sim completely, including the character file and all of the references, so that they could safely make space for more sims. And thus he invented the deleted to method, first described in October 2006. This method allowed people to safely resolve the overpopulation problem. Pescado and other mothers have also been saying that moving sims between neighborhoods is not recommended and I agree, I also don't recommend it and I will explain why later but for now all you need to know is that it's the fastest way to overpopulate your neighborhood. Bear in mind we are still in the reasonable zone here, as in up until this point I agree with everything that more awesome than you members have said. And then. Okay, so here is where the timeline becomes a little bit fuzzy as it's humanly impossible for me to read all posts on More Awesome Than You. Believe me, I've tried. But sometime between 2006 and 2009, these three true statements Overpopulation may cause corruption Sims deleted in the bin still contribute to overpopulation and deleting character files is bad because of the broken references somehow merged together into deleting sims in the bin causes corruption. For some reason, people have connected dangling ones and fears to moving sims between the hoods as well, even though these two things have absolutely nothing to do with each other. The original corruption guide from simswiki.info, one that the guide from sims.fandom.com was based on, has been created in July 2013. So, 8 years have passed from 2005, which is when people have started talking about the save file corruption. And during those 8 years, the issue has been discussed so many times by so many different people that it caused some crazy game of telephone situation and that first version of the guide already contained a lot of false information. And the first version of the Sims Wiki guide was basically a copy paste from that one and then it sort of evolved into its own thing when more stuff was added. At the end of my investigation I was still left with a lot of questions that I couldn't answer. 
I knew there was one final thing I need to do before making this video. And that was to register on the more awesome than you forums to ask Pescado directly. What the hell happened? So, it turns out creating an account on that forum is a pain in the ass. What the hell are these security questions? Oh for fuck! After around 50 tries and some googling, I discovered that the issue was my email address. It didn't accept any of my legit Gmail accounts, but aprilblack at fakeemail.com somehow worked. Never mind, I got in. So, I started a thread basically asking, what makes you think that deleting sims from the bin is bad because I found the evidence suggesting otherwise? Of course, in a true more awesome than you fashion, someone made fun of my post before I got a meaningful answer. But then, believe it or not, Pescado himself actually replied. And there it was, the final piece of a puzzle. If you mean, will doing this in very isolated incidents explode your game instantly, then no. However, once you fall into a pattern of it, it will cause unbounded growth of these stab files that are largely invisible to the player. As the game has no intrinsic garbage collection routines, this means that it never ever gets cleaned up. This can produce several kinds of failure and problems. 1. You can overflow the file limits of the OS. Each of these dot entries still counts against you here. This will cause total failure of the game to load or save correctly. 2. Anything which actually does have to iterate through all of these steps in script code can overflow the game's max instruction count, aka too many iterations, and thus fail. 3. If none of these conditions are reached, the game ultimately has a hard limit on the number of sim descriptions present. While this is a number that's probably too high to plausibly reach in normal play, casually spamming ghost entries into your neighborhood safe can easily hit this limit, which is why transplanting households across neighborhood safes is extra bad, as this explosively grows the numbers of stubs. 4. The problem can be compounded if unsafe mods attempt to interact with these stubbed entries in incorrect ways. So. Here it is, a confirmation from Pescado that my theory was basically correct. You have it right here, so if you don't believe some random lady from YouTube, you can at least believe Pescado. I mean, the guy started the damn thing. Alright, so let's say you've deleted some character files, either on purpose or by accident, or maybe they just went missing on their own. So now your neighborhood is definitely corrupted, and soon enough you're gonna start seeing those toddlers with lifetime wants or dogs in the family tree, right? Well, not exactly. Remember what I said earlier in the video? Theoretically, and I mean very theoretically, remember that for later, some other sim could generate with that NID and inherit all of the remaining references as a result. I said theoretically because the game actually has a safety mechanism to prevent this exact thing from happening. Seriously, The Sims 2 devs were way more competent than people give them credit for. This mechanism is called Sim Creation Index. Every neighborhood has it, you can see it right here in Sim PE. So what is it for? If you have engaged in some evil experiments like myself and have deleted some character files, you've probably noticed that the game always tries to fill in the blanks when generating the character file names. So if you have 300 sims in your neighborhood and you delete the character file number 10, the next generated sim in that neighborhood will also get a character file number 10, rather than 301. However, things look a little bit different with sim description. Since the NIDs are being used everywhere for all references, the game must be really careful when assigning a new number to make sure that it hasn't been previously used, even by a deleted sim. So that's where the sim creation index comes in. It works like this. The game always remembers what was the ID of the last generated sim, and it doesn't matter if that sim was deleted. 
Yes, that index still applies even after you nuke your entire neighborhood with delete all characters. In my custom neighborhood Caraville, the latest sim description has the ID of 459. The sim creation index is 460. So the next sim that gets generated in that neighborhood will get the NID of 460. Makes perfect sense. Obviously, you can reset the sim creation index manually in SimPE. The How to Delete Sims Properly guide mentions this. If you do reset it, then yes, the game does fill in the gaps in the NIDs, meaning it starts from the top and if the NID is not taken, then it's free real estate. I did simulate that situation in my strange town. Do you remember those crazy screenshots of the Smith family that I've shown you earlier? To achieve this, I deleted Pollination Tech Smith's character file, then I reset the sim creation index and then I generated like a hundred toddlers, and one of them did eventually snap up Pollination Tech's old NID. And the result was exactly as expected. The vanilla game ships with another beautiful example, Bella Goth and Merry Melons. There is evidence suggesting that the first versions of Pascal and Laszlo Curious were deleted completely along with the character file and then they were recreated and manually connected to Wittgund as relatives. But the sim relations of old versions of Curious Brothers were not cleaned up. Then for some reason sim creation index was reset or maybe it was still in development back then. So Bella Goth and Mary Melons generated with their old NIDs. The result? Now both the ladies think that they're related to Wittgund. Another mystery solved. So what do we make of this? It looks like the sim creation index is a pretty secure way to ensure that the references will never get inherited, even after the character file goes missing. But there are screenshots and forum posts all over the internet which prove that this does happen in people's games. And I imagine people don't just go around resetting their sim creation index in SimPE, right? So how could this be? I have observed at least two bugs in the game that could be the reason why. One of them is that sometimes the sim creation index is not saved properly into the neighborhood package. It never happened to me personally, but I do have evidence of at least one instance of this bug, as a very kind Reddit user has sent me her neighborhood where this sort of thing happened. The other bug actually happened to me, in my custom neighborhood. And it's absolutely insane. I will discuss both of these phenomena a little bit later. But the important thing to stress here is that for NID recycling to actually occur, the character file must be completely missing. Let me reiterate this. If you delete a sim in a bin, their NID is still considered as taken and the new sims will never, ever acquire their data even if you reset the sim creation index. This is why, although I think Pescado's delete 2 is a really good and useful method, I don't agree with the resetting the sim creation index part. I personally recommend following this guide, but just skipping this step. That index is there for a reason, and I think it's a bad idea to reset it, especially if you're playing in one of the pre-made neighborhoods, as they already come pre-shipped with dangling references. Maxis really love to nuke in those character files, apparently. There is a risk that you could miss some references to deleted character files before you reset the sim creation index. Pescado's reasoning for resetting that index was that if you leave it intact, then, in his words, you will spiral down the 16-bit doom, as apparently The Sims 2 uses a 16-bit integer to store the neighbor ID value. And listen, I understand what he's trying to say, and I think he has a point, but unless you're planning on creating 32,000 Sims, I'd say you're good. For all of my fellow knowledge sims watching this video, I've done a small experiment because I wanted to see what happens when you roll over that index. I've manually set the strange town sim creation index to 32,766, so one less than the limit, right? 
I had a test subject ready called 16-bit doom. I made her pregnant with Vitkund because that bastard came over just to shove her after she used the telescope. The baby got the index of 32,767 because the game decided to generate a gypsy matchmaker before that baby was born. Nikki Gerges, you sneaky ass bi- Then I made her have another baby with Pascal, cause he told me that he fancies some 16-bit doom. This exceeded the short integer limit. Do you wanna know what happens? Nothing special, the game just crashes. It doesn't corrupt any existing files, it just won't let you create any more sims. What about moving sims between the neighborhoods then? Is it safe? Well, yes, but with a giant asterisk. Moving sims from one neighborhood to another using the in-game house bin is not going to irreversibly break your neighborhood as they used to say. However, I still don't recommend it unless it's a single family straight out of creator sim and you've backed up your neighborhood beforehand. I think this process is a little bit buggy, there is a lot of potential for things to go wrong and it creates a lot of mess. On top of all of that, it's the fastest way to overpopulate your neighborhood by stealth. Let me explain. When you move the sim out of the neighborhood, the same thing happens as if you would delete them in a bin. So a smaller character file, the sim gets unlinked, memories and family ties work. So in the source neighborhood, everything is fine. However, when you move your sim into the target neighborhood, the same sort of stub character file gets generated for every single sim that appears in their family tree, as well as their memories. Every single one of them. I can understand this design decision since it prevents memories and family ties from being broken, with that in mind, a single household family straight out of create a sim should be okay to move. However, imagine what happens when you move sims that know everybody in their neighborhood, or have a multi-generational family. You know how in Veroneville there are only three occupied houses, right? I move those three houses out of Veroneville into my test hood and watch the characters folder as they were being copied. Just these three houses generated more than a hundred character files. Moving families that are split into multiple households causes even more chaos, because those families are no longer connected. That stab character file that got generated for that sim because they appeared in someone else's family tree, and the sim that later got moved, are two separate character files and two separate sim descriptions. Not only do you end up with rubbish duplicates, but the family is no longer family unless you fix it in SimPE. So remember, if you accidentally put an occupied house in the lot bin, whatever you do, do not put it back into the neighborhood they came from, or else you will cause even more problems. Put it in the test neighborhood, then extract their appearances in SimPE, and then restore them using the method I mentioned earlier. A quick side note, if you ever wonder why it takes such a long time to place an occupied house in the neighborhood, this is why. Because in order to create those stop character files, the game must loop through all of the memories and all family ties of every single sim being moved. If you remember when I was explaining deleting sims, so if we would choose option B, right? The game does a similar thing when moving sims between the neighborhood, just in reverse. So be careful before you place any occupied lots in the neighborhood and always make sure to create a backup. Because if the game crashes whilst you're placing this lot, you might be in trouble. As you can probably see, moving sims between the neighborhoods is an incredibly messy process and it causes an explosive growth of the target neighborhood's character file count. So keep that in mind before you start moving any sims, but don't panic if you already did. You'll be fine. Just keep your neighborhood population in check from now on, especially if you play on a Mac. The topic of moving sims between neighborhoods brings me nicely to one of the most common errors you can see in Hood Checker. 
incorrect subject instance. We already know what NIDs are and that they're used by The Sims 2 to identify which sim description is which, but actually this is not the only number that the game is assigning to a sim. I know, this is getting more and more convoluted, so please bear with me. There is also something called sim ID. It's this scary looking string of letters and numbers, which you can see right here and here. So why are there two IDs for one sim? What's going on? Well, the simplest way to put it is that NID is the ID of the sim description and sim ID is the ID of the character file. If you move sims between neighborhoods, they obviously can't use their old NIDs since it could already be taken in the target hood, right? So they get a new one, according to the sim creation index. They also get a new sim ID because a brand new character file gets generated in the process. So how does that relate to memories? Well, you see, memories use both. And that's because the thumbnail for a memory doesn't have to be a sim. It can also be a job icon or even furniture. And those obviously don't have NIDs. But everything in the game has a GUID, and that includes sims, their GUID is sim ID. Memories about sims also use NIDs on top of it. I'm not exactly sure why, but there must have been a reason why the devs wanted to link the memories to both character files and sim descriptions. When you move sims between neighborhoods, the game patches all memories to include a new sim ID, but it doesn't do the same for the NIDs. It's just a bug in the game that's never been fixed. The memories don't appear broken on the in-game panel since the game falls back on the character file to display a thumbnail. That's where it actually comes from, after all. Hood Checker detects those errors and can easily fix them, so there's no need to worry about those. I wouldn't even call this corruption, and neither did Mutilda. It's just a form of data inconsistency, and it's good practice to clean those memories up. I was wondering whether I should include this, since this has been patched and it's not really a thing anymore. But people to this day keep asking if these families are safe to play. And this bug is actually quite interesting, and it gives a brilliant insight into how NIDs work. You know how they say that before installing the Seasons patch, you shouldn't let Samantha Automas give birth, because in some people's games the father of the twins showed up as a random neighbor, or a grim reaper, or a bloody stray dog. So, what the hell? Because I didn't want to uninstall my ultimate collection, I've created a Windows XP virtual machine and installed just the base game and seasons on it. That way I was able to actually show you this bug. Alright, so if you look at any pregnant sim in SimPE, they have an invisible token in memories called Pregnancy Controller. That token specifies who the father is. The token uses NID for that reference, let's remember that. Have you ever heard of stealth hoods? These are the invisible neighborhoods which make those annoying families appear in every single neighborhood sim bin. The Optimus family originally comes from a stealth hood like this. And when you open up a neighborhood for the first time, they essentially get moved from that stealth hood to your neighborhood. It's exactly the same process as when you move the sims between neighborhoods using the in-game lock bin. It just happens automatically in the background. Automus had their original NIDs in their stealth hood, but once they move into the new hood, they need to receive new ones, obviously, because otherwise there's a risk that this NID is already taken in the target neighborhood. The issue with pregnant Samantha was that Peter's NID changed to a new one when they ended up in the family bin, but due to a bug that has later been patched, her pregnancy token remained unchanged and still pointed to Peter's old NID from the stealth hood, number 21 to be exact. That's the problem. So, contrary to popular belief, the game doesn't just pick a random sim to be the father, 
it's always going to be a sim that has an ID 21 in that particular neighborhood. In Pleasant View, for example, the father of the twins is always going to be Brandy Broke. In Strange Town, it's going to be no one, because an ID 21 is not taken. Whoever it was, EA just nuked their character file. If in your neighborhood, sim with the NID21 happens to be the Grim Reaper or a dog, then, then yeah, that dog is going to be the father according to the game because this is the information the game received from the pregnancy token. This doesn't cause corruption, this is corruption. As in, the game is receiving incorrect data and it's making incorrect decisions based on that. When this happens, it's pretty tricky to fix. Still possible, but fixing the family ties is not enough. You will have to screen the memories as well. Also, wants and fears of all of the sims involved are another important one. Sims have so-called triggers for wants and fears, and they appear after certain events in the game. Having children or having parents is one of them. So you'll have to get rid of that as well, and also fix up sim relations. That is a lot to sort out, and it's pretty hard to do for players who don't have that much knowledge about sim PE. But yeah, this is what the mystery of Automas Twins is all about. Again, if you have the ultimate collection or if you have installed the seasons patch, then you have nothing to worry about. It's been fixed. <laughs> Some people might listen to me and be like, hey, I've done all of these illegal things that you're saying are safe and my neighborhood got corrupted. How do you explain this? Well, my answer to that is correlation does not equal causation. And as you're going to see in a minute, most of the reasons for save file corruption are actually beyond the player's control. And it doesn't matter what you do or what you don't do when you're playing the game. Let's examine the most common neighborhood corruption symptoms with real life examples and discuss where they might be coming from. So buckle up, because this is going to be the most technically heavy part of the video. We already know the technical reason behind sims with mismatched wants and fears. It's because they generated with the NID that used to be taken by another sim and they inherited their sim wants and fears entry. NID recycling could actually explain a lot of other reference related oddities like one sim disappearing and then another replacing them in the family tree. But since we have the sim creation index, then how can this actually happen in game? Because it does happen, right? Yes, it does. It's quite rare, but it looks like the sim creation index can be reset back to one due to a bug. I suspect that this could be an error due in saving of the main neighborhood of package, since that's where this index is being stored. One of the reasons for this error might be a badly timed game crash. My guess is, and bear in mind this is just complete speculation, is that when a crash happens, the game might not receive the updated value for the sim creation index or the value is somehow corrupted, so the game falls back to 1. Another reason could be playing on a Mac. As you will see later on, Mac users experience all kinds of save file problems due to the infamous hard file limit. And we know that this limit can seriously mess with the integrity of the main neighborhood dot package. Resetting of the sim creation index could be one of the possible symptoms. And I think this is what happened to the custom neighborhood that the Reddit user Charms has sent me. Kashmir region. More than once from the looks of it. How do I know this? Let me explain. This is a brilliant corruption case study by the way, so let's have a closer look at this. In a healthy neighborhood, NIDs and character file numbers should be more or less proportional. Meaning that when you're in SimPE Sim Browser and you sort ascending by instance, which is an ID, and you scroll down, the numbers in the file name column should gradually increase as well. I said more or less because you can see some discrepancies around families that have been created in CreatorSim. 
And that's because as soon as you press this button right here and a new sim appears on your screen, that sim already gets a new character file and the sim creation index gets pushed over. And then that file is deleted if you cancel that sim, but the sim creation index never ever goes back. However, these differences are never massive, as under normal circumstances, both NIDs and character file numbers are incremented in order. Now let's have a look at Kashmir region. We sort by instance, scroll down. Up until the sim number 75, everything looks good. And then, uh oh, what's that? Sim number 77 with the character file number 155. And where is the sim with the character file 71? All the way down here with the NID 209. That is not a good sign. So we have evidence of two things here. One, high NID with a low character file number almost certainly means that that character file used to be taken by another sim. But that sim has disappeared and the game filled in the blanks. Two, Low NID with an unusually high character file number is a symptom of sim creation index being reset. Case in point, Strange Town and Curious Family. Why? Because, oh my god, this is so hard to explain. Okay, in this particular hood, a bunch of character files disappeared first. Most likely random townies, so Charms hasn't noticed. The game is constantly generating sims, so it has filled in all the blanks in the character file numbers. And then the sim creation index got reset for the first time. The number of character files was already at 154, but the game has just received the information that it should start looking for NIDs from number 1. What is the first available number from the top? Looks like 77, because that sim went missing ages ago. So we have a sim 77 with the character file number 155. The sim creation index must have gone reset right around here. Are you still with me? All right, get ready for more madness. The sim creation index eventually caught up with the number of sims. Charms has told me that she played on a Mac until 2012, which could explain the disappearing files. But then she told me something else, which suggests that this bug probably happened more than once. Apparently two sims randomly went missing, and shortly after two other sims generated with their old NIDs. The symptom of that was that they replaced those two missing sims in the family trees. The sims that snapped up the missing NIDs are Eli Herberts and Simon Stone. Let's have a look at those gentlemen, shall we? So, the character files that are surrounding Eli and Simon are 177 and 180. So, we can conclude that the character files of those two missing sims were 178 and 179. Looking at numbers, they must have gone missing right after this sim was created. We got Savannah Elberts with character file number 178, and that's when the first sim disappeared. Then a few more sims were generated, and then the second sim disappeared, and Yoilo Yamorika generated with the character file name. Eli and Simon have character files 269 and 270 respectively. So the sim creation index was reset again, right after the Yamorika family was created. This time there were only two blanks, and they were both playable sims, that's why Charms noticed the bug straight away. So, this is some clear evidence that spontaneous sim creation index resetting can and does occur in people's games, but I think it's very rare. I would risk a claim that this happens more often to Mac users, since we do have evidence that the Mac file limit does mess with the integrity of the main neighborhood.package sometimes, on top of making the character files disappear. There is, however, another reason why people might see the toddlers with lifetime ones in their games, which does not include sim creation index resetting, or even any character files going AWOL. And if it's not an isolated incident, then that would explain a lot of these crazy screenshots, actually. <laughs> 
It happened to my beloved custom neighborhood and I found it whilst recording the footage for this video. It looks like there might be a bug in the game which makes the game generate a shitload of Sim 1s and Fears entries that are not connected to any Sims. I have no idea why this happened and I've been digging and digging and I've been even investigating the core game functions hidden deep within the objects.package and I found nothing. But I do have the evidence of it happening in my save. First of all, the NIDs of those one trees go up to 700 and never at any point have I had this many sims in this neighborhood. Currently there's 420 character files in there, so not even close. Second, the backup I made right before this occurred has a correct number of one trees that actually matches the number of sims. So sometime between February and May this year, some insane bug happened which caused the game to generate a whopping 264 useless want trees. What is even crazier is that 5 of these new Sim Wants and Fears entries have actually overwritten the existing ones. Now, because these want trees are not connected to any Sims, they didn't progress the Sim Creation Index. The Sim Creation Index of this neighborhood matches the number of Sims that exist in it. Which, of course, caused the new sims to generate with those IDs. And unfortunately, I didn't catch that in time, so before I knew it, I had two toddlers, one baby and one kitten with lifetime ones. There are two types of want trees that my game seems to have generated. First one is basically empty, it only contains the generic is born trigger. This is typical for pet want trees, since pets don't have wants and fears. I assume they just made a placeholder want tree for pets to keep the code happy and avoid any null references. The second type is a want tree typical for a townie or an NPC, so a childless adult born in Creator Sim. So it looks like for some reason the game decided to generate a whole load of stray, towny and NPC want trees without a character file to back them up. I don't know what sort of programming madness happened here. All I know is it had absolutely nothing to do with deleting sims since I haven't deleted any in that neighborhood. And none went missing, I keep track of everybody. It must have been a spontaneous bug or possibly a mod, we can't rule that out. Maybe there is an undiscovered bug in those Pescados anti-overpopulation mods since I have all of them. The locks say absolutely nothing, so I haven't got a clue. If you have any ideas, please give me a shout. This bug can be detected by Hood Checker. And it was, but because I was so busy making this video, I haven't scanned that neighborhood in six months. So I was like, I just lost six months of progress. But then I remember that, hey, I'm a hacker man after all, I can fix this. Well, at the very least, I know enough about the game to do symptomatic treatment when necessary, so I fixed those want trees to the best of my ability and I made a conscious decision to carry on with the save. For less simpy savvy players, the only viable solution to fix this would be restoring a backup. But imagine if I didn't spot this at all and just carried on playing without removing those dangling want trays. Then the next 264 sims generated in my game would have a broken want tree that was meant for someone else. Now, talk about chaos. But if you happen to have a toddler with a lifetime want or some other reference related issues in your game, should you delete your neighborhood or not? I say no. I say carry on playing. Whatever happens, happens. Just make backups and if the neighborhood stops loading, restore the previous backup. Even if you see some want related glitches, your neighborhood can still go on for many, many years afterwards. Charms' neighborhood is the evidence for this. She had some sims disappearing back in 2008 and guess what? She's still playing this neighborhood, as I am still playing mine. 
And to be completely honest with you, I have seen some glitches after I fixed those one trees that have been overwritten, but they weren't too serious and I could just go into SimPE and fix them. And even if I ignored them, probably nothing bad would have happened. Sometimes you might fire up the game and realize that basically all of certain sims data is gone. Or perhaps more than one sim is affected. They have no aspiration and might be an aspiration failure. Their age is set to the beginning of the adult stage. They are treated as male and have a male voice regardless of their actual gender. <laughs> They have maximum fitness, no career data, no memories, no personality, no skills, no interests, no nothing. Case study number one. Mod The Sims thread titled Entire Neighborhood in Aspiration Failure, Wrong or Missing Aspirations, Ages Reset, Skill Points Missing. Note how even the kid is an adult male. This is why the children are floating. Case study number two. Shout out to Calipers and Tongs. Okay. So I think there's probably still ways I could get the Nygma seriously. So the weirdest thing has just happened. Firstly, it crashed while loading the lot. The lot is not here and the lot is also not in the occupied lot list anymore. So the game has literally just eaten the lot with those sims on. So I had a look in SimPE, and all of those sims are still there, but they're in the default household now. So we've got these sims here now, and all of their aspirations have gone. Something else I've just noticed um, is they've all come back as adults. They're supposed to be elders, according to the Sims wiki. Oh god, they really did get messed up by whatever happened, didn't they? Because I think she's got a male voice now, too. Yeah, they're both male now. So, why does this happen? You can replicate this scenario when you delete the Sim description entry, but leave the character file intact. Remember when I said that the game does generate the sim description entry for a character file if it can't find one, but the entry is very broken? Yeah, that's what I meant. So I'm not 100% sure why this happens randomly in people's games, but again, the evidence points to saving errors and or playing on a Mac. In that example from Mod The Sims, we have an extreme version of that issue, because from the description, it looks like the entire sim description table got wiped. Like all of the entries. My theory is that either there has been some external factor that has messed with that person's save file, or the game crashed at the wrong time and that severely corrupted the neighborhood dog package. As for calipers and tongs specifically, I think I have a pretty good idea as to what might have happened, because the game crashed whilst loading a lot. And that's very important, because that's one of the times when the neighborhood dot package file gets saved. So the new character files got created whilst placing the house moved from Veroneville, but the neighborhood dot package did not save properly due to a crash. Therefore, the information about where that house was placed was not saved. And also, the sim description entries were not saved either, since they're also stored in that file. So, the game generated new placeholder sim description entries and it placed them in the default household, because where else their house was missing? That's what I think happened. Another reason why this sort of thing can happen is having SimPE open whilst running the game. Yeah, SimPE is very good at telling you when you're trying to launch it whilst the game is open, but sadly this doesn't work the other way around. If you are using SimPE daily, like myself, it's very easy to forget to turn it off before playing. Don't forget. Because if you do, the game launches as normal, but the neighborhood dot package is locked from saving as it's being used by another program. For example, if you're adding saphoods, all sims living in those saphoods will get their character files, but not sim descriptions. 
they will get the placeholder ones next time you launch the game. Disappearing Sims is a very common problem that every Sims 2 player either experienced at some point or at least has heard about it. On the Sims Wiki corruption article, Disappearing Sims is mentioned as one of the symptoms of neighborhood corruption. And yes, but this causes people to believe that there is a causation link between those so-called VBTs and the Sims disappearing, whereas I don't think it's really that simple. So here's the drill. You are playing your favorite family and all is well. You save the game or quit without saving, then come back to it the next day and suddenly you realize that one of the Sims from this family is just gone disappeared without a trace, nowhere to be found. They don't appear in the relationship panel, nor in the family tree, and all memories of them have an empty thumbnail and the dollar subject where their name is supposed to be. So if you made it this far into the video, you know exactly what this means. The character file is gone. Permanently, from your hard drive. That means you can't get the sim back. As to why this happens, this is a tough one. I've never actually managed to replicate this scenario in my game, so this is all pure speculation and studying other people's experiences. But I would say that almost always the reason is some external factor messing with your save files. One of the big culprits is playing on a Mac. I've never personally used a Mac, but apparently it has a hard limit of files that can be opened at once by a single process. So be wary of that if you're a Mac user. Apparently exceeding that limit can cause the character files to disappear, but it seems like there are ways to work around that limit. Another big one is OneDrive. If you are using it, make sure that the Sims 2 folder in Documents does not have the OneDrive Sync turned on. Judging from other people's reports, OneDrive Sync does go wrong sometimes and it can completely and utterly corrupt your save files, as well as make individual character files disappear. People have also been saying that overpopulation might be the cause of disappearing Sims. And for the longest time, I was one of these people, until I started investigating the issue further. Now my position is, I don't think there is a simple causation link between the two. I mean, there definitely is for Mac users, but as for the Windows users, it's not that simple. I've tried to overpopulate one of my test hoods on purpose, just to see what happens, and I got to 1,855 character files before I gave up, but I did notice that this neighborhood started getting a little bit laggy the more sims it had. Mind you, I have a powerful gaming PC and an SSD drive. Also, I've noticed that the saving process started taking a long time. I can definitely see how this can invite crashes on slower machines, and as we've discussed, crashes can cause all kinds of saving errors, and that would include character files not being properly committed. What about the character file limit? The consensus has been that if you exceed it, any new sims will be immediately lost. I have evidence that it's not exactly true. The hard limit seems to be on the value of an ID, not the number of sims themselves. Even if you somehow create 32,767 sims, as I demonstrated previously, the game will crash before you are even able to create a new character. So what about base game and uni? There used to be an artificial character file limit of a thousand, right? Pescado has said it once and everyone's been taking his word at face value because no one is crazy enough to, let's say, create a virtual machine with just the base game installed and then artificially generate a thousand character files and see what happens when you try to exceed that number. Right? Yeah, there is no limit. There never was. I was able to successfully generate a thousand character files and beyond in just the base game. I think people misunderstood Pescado again, myself included. 
This is the source that the Sims Wiki guide links to, and bear in mind this is a quote of a quote, as I couldn't find the original post. Here it goes. Before Nightlight, number of characters was a serious problem that could be reached around 800 to 1000 entries. Furthermore, critical fixes which resolved the inefficiencies of the code could extend this out more. Post Nightlife, the iteration max was increased to about 10 times its former size, so it's reasonable to expect that iteration limits, which were formerly hit at 800 to 1000 entries, will expand by the same order of magnitude. It is unlikely that sheer number of characters alone will blow anything up, but it remains desirable to avoid the accumulation of craft created by unnecessary spawning of useless characters and garbage tailings created by moving occupied lots, as these leave behind undesirable debris which can still jam your neighborhood's functioning. He's talking about the max iteration count, aka the too many iterations error, not a hard character file limit. Apparently the game is iterating through all character files in certain situations, and the iteration count limit used to be much lower pre-nightlife, leading to object errors, not sims disappearing. I can't confirm this claim, but this sounds about right. Either way, overpopulation does not seem to be directly linked to the sims disappearing. There are a multitude of other reasons why you might be losing your character files or experiencing other save file related errors. You might be running out of hard drive space. You might have some trigger happy antivirus. The game might crash during saving or during quitting without saving or you might get the blue screen of death. Or sometimes your computer is just like, you know what, fuck you and your game. The most prominent example of this happening is Calipers and Tongs and their custom neighborhood Blightgate. I highly recommend their channel by the way, it's a gold mine. So here's what went wrong. And I'm still not entirely sure what even happened. Like I don't even know if it's normal corruption because it seemed like something went wrong with the creation of the neighborhood. One of the two households is the critter household and like none of the other households generated, none of the subhood Maxis, Sims are there, and in the um, thumbnail in the neighborhood view, it looks perfectly normal. There are like two pets, but here you've got Danny Critter, and then you've got the townie Shanine Boehner, who is apparently in the Critter household. And I looked her up on the Sims wiki, and she's actually like La Fiesta Tech townie. I looked up her like profile down here, and it said she's a large dog. Sarah Critter, I had to look through the sim browser, Sarah Critter isn't there, there's just Danny Critter and then Shanine Boehner. Oh god, this is horrifying. <laughs> oh my god, she's pregnant. Terminate pregnancy. She has like all of Sarah's information, but her name and her mesh, it's like she's been fused with Sarah specifically. <laughs> I downloaded Blightgate because of course I did, and honestly I have no idea what happened there. But it looks like for some reason, instead of generating new character files for the subhood inhabitants, the game has overwritten the existing ones. The sim description entries of the sims already living in that neighborhood were untouched, but the new character files got linked to them instead. In this case, Shanana Banana, or whatever the hell her name is, got linked to Sarah Critter's sim description entry. And that is obviously going to cause chaos, because the character file stores the sim's name, 3D model and appearance data, whilst the sim description holds everything else. The information about their age, life state, skills, job info, pregnancy info, and yes, it also tells you whether they're a human or a pet. So basically two sims got merged together. The only way I managed to replicate it is by hacking it, so to speak. 
I copied the character files from the template La Fiesta tech, renamed them using the PowerShell command to include N007 in their name. Unfortunately, I discovered that just overwriting the character files is not enough. You have to update the sim ID to match up with the old character file, otherwise the sim description won't be linked. So I did that. I overwrote Sarah Critter's character file, updated the GUID and that poor professor, oh my god. The bottom line is, some things are just beyond our control, which is why it's absolutely essential to create backups. Another thing I recommend is running Hood Checker every now and then, just a scan option is enough. Because the disappeared sim can be a townie or an NPC, and you might not necessarily notice that they're gone. Pay attention especially to the sim wants and fears section. If Hood Checker says, sim does not exist, has wants and fears, there is a good chance that someone's character file got deleted. Disappearing sims is a piece of cake. Yeah, you will lose that sim if you don't have a backup, but it just one sim. If your whole neighborhood renders unplayable, then you're screwed. This is like the final boss of neighborhood corruption. When this happens, it's game over, unless you have a backup. You might have two different scenarios. Either the neighborhood is present in the save files but gone off the select screen, or it is there but it just loads indefinitely. The rule of thumb is that if the hood does not appear at all, then there's something wrong with the main neighborhood.package file. If it appears but it doesn't load, then there is an issue with the files other than the neighborhood.package. Let's start with the first scenario. Why would the main neighborhood.package get corrupted? The answer is game crashes. As I said, your entire neighborhood gets saved as you play. You can make changes to your neighborhood in many different ways. For example, you can add lots, decorations, change terrain, create families and move them in. Yes, this is also a neighborhood change. Bulldoze lots and so on. All of this needs to be saved somehow, and in this case you don't even have to click any button, it just happens in the background. From what I've observed looking at the package modified date, it gets saved in the following scenarios. When loading a lot from the neighborhood screen, when entering create a sim, after creating a family, and when quitting the game. And these are the four most dangerous times for your game to crash. And that's because of the risk of crashing mid-save, which may severely corrupt your neighborhood package. The game no longer recognizes the package as valid, therefore it gets ignored and the neighborhood does not appear on the select screen. Here is an example of this exact thing happening to someone on Reddit. Here's me corrupting my neighborhood.package on purpose to demonstrate that this is the underlying reason for the hood not appearing in the game. So what about the second scenario? Well, here the situation is a little bit more tricky because there are many possible reasons for this. One of them could be too many missing slash corrupted lot or character files. Here is an example of me replicating that scenario in my game. I deleted a bunch of lot and character files and then that hood refused to load. Although there seems to be a certain threshold of how many missing files the game can handle before it falls over. It's hard to tell. There could be some other reasons though. Perhaps you downloaded a corrupted lot. Maybe you have some bad CC neighborhood decorations. I'm just speculating, it's really really hard to tell. You might try and open that neighborhood in SimPE, but to be honest with you, if the game doesn't open it, chances are SimPE won't either. In which case, any chances of fixing anything without a backup are pretty slim.
Okay, so you made it this far into the video and now you're probably confused. So all of that talk about corruption was just a lie then. What are the do's and don'ts of corruption then? Let me summarize it all. The single most important thing you need to do to avoid corruption is making backups. This entire guide could essentially be scrapped and just replaced with two words. Make backups. I've seen so many people who have all corruption prevention mods and regularly use Hootchecker but have never made a backup. And no, as a software developer, I will never shut up about the importance of backups. It's like with dentists and flossing. How do you make backups? It's pretty simple. Go to the documents, then the games folder, then neighborhoods. Select the folder that contains the neighborhood you want to backup. If you're not sure which one, N001 to N003 are Pleasant View, Strange Town, and Veroneville, respectively. Anything after that is yours, in the order it appears on the neighborhood select screen. You can also check the photo album just to make sure. Copy the entire folder and put it someplace safe. It's also very important to keep more than one backup. I'd say at least three to five, because there is a chance that your neighborhood is already corrupted at the time of making a backup. I keep track of my backups, organizing them into folders like this. I play rotationally and I like to save the copy of my spreadsheet inside of the backup folder so that when I have to restore it, I know exactly where I left off. When you restore the backup, it's very important that you don't paste the backup folder on top of the existing one. Do not override the neighborhood files. Delete the corrupted folder and paste the backup once it's gone. And do backups regularly, not just once every blue moon. And always, always backup your game before making changes in SimPE. Even I managed to break my hood once whilst messing around and I'm an experienced SimPE user. What else can you do? Well, I'll tell you what you definitely shouldn't do. First of all, do not delete or modify any files directly unless you know what you're doing. I think this doesn't need an explanation. Second, try not to overpopulate your neighborhood. Having too many character files can slow down your game and cause various bugs. You need to be especially careful when you're a Mac user. How to avoid overpopulation? Add subhoods only when you need to. Subhoods add a few hundred new character files on average. Install all of those Pescado mods that prevent the game from spawning sims like crazy. Avoid moving sims between neighborhoods, especially those with lots of memories or big family trees. If you already moved some sims, don't panic, you're fine, just don't move anymore. When you eventually hit the point of having loads of rubbish character files, just use the deleted to method on the sims that you don't need. Don't reset the sim creation index though. If you deleted any sims from the bin or any gravestones, you are absolutely fine. Your hood is not corrupted, so don't touch anything. Just keep in mind that sims deleted that way still count towards the total population. Use the launcher by Lazy Duchess because it fixes a lot of problems with the game, including the too many iterations bug. I recommend using Hood Checker regularly. Pay attention especially to the Sim Ones and Fears and Family Ties sections. If you see those signs, restore the latest backup to get the Sim back. Run a remove option every now and then to get rid of all the rubbish relationships and clean up the data that you don't need. Just remember that Hood Checker is not a solution for all of your corruption related problems. It won't fix much beyond references to missing character files. Keep your hard drive in good health. Make sure that you always have enough space before you run the game. And for the love of God, do not use OneDrive Sync for the Sims 2 folder in the documents. A lot of people have lost their saves that way. If you have some money to spare, consider investing in an SSD drive as it's a game changer. Not only are they much faster than HDD drives, but also more reliable. 
and stop stressing about corruption. Just enjoy the game. But don't forget about backups.